So I'm first instead of last so I can really enjoy this session. The year is 1664, and you're a man named Robert Hooke in London, and you've just taken this newfangled instrument that people used to see things far away, and you flipped it around to see things very close. It's called a microscope, and you look in it, and you see a world you never imagined. You can't believe it. You know that if you tell others, nobody else will believe it. What do you do? So you call in an artist, and you publish this book, one book. You print 1,600 copies, and it sells out in one day. It's the first bestseller in the history of science, and it creates a panic in London. Because for the first time, the world of the very small becomes visible. And the image that you show first is the image of a common house fly. This is the compound eye of a fly. Now, put yourself back in 1664. Nobody has ever seen the microworld. Nobody even knows there's a microworld. And you explain that every house in London is filled with these monsters. <laughs> And if that wasn't bad enough, flies you can kill. But then he says, oh, by the way, here is what a flea looks like under this newfangled instrument. <laughs> Raiders of the Lost Ark in London in 1664. And if we zoom in, we can see exactly what he saw and what he engraved. He saw hooks and tentacles on a common flea. And if that wasn't bad enough, he then shows for the first time what a bed louse looks like. And I gotta tell you something, if you live in London in 1664, these are close friends of yours because this is what they look like. Okay. This is a common louse. So looking up close at a common louse, you can see the amazing detail and artwork that goes into seeing the microworld for the very first time. Now, if that was all Robert Hooke did, this would be a landmark in the history of imagination because this opened our imagination to an entirely new world. But he does one other thing. He looks in the microworld and he sees something he's never really paid attention to when he was looking at. He sees this image. Right? And he goes, huh. What is that? This is a leaf he's looking at. And if you look here in the leaf, he sees these squares in a leaf. And he says, wow, that reminds me of what a nun cell looks like in the convent. That's where the nuns live. They live in these places called cells. And he invents the word cell to describe the basic unit of biological life for which DNA, of course, resides. So today's session dates back to this book, and the discovery of the microworld and the definition of what a cell is based on a convent of nuns. Thank you. Better and better.